It's my privilege and honor to welcome you to be a part of what God is doing on this campus. Since 1976, God has done some amazing thing with the people and the students of Jackson Christian School. Well, I remember Jackson Christian before there was a Jackson Christian. I remember having meetings talk about the uh, benefits and the possibilities of starting a school. Mom and Dad, Jimmy and Lisa Key, had been involved in a small startup Christian school and they had enjoyed that experience so much that part of their decision making and locating back to the south uh, where Dad had gone to medical school was to find a, a situation where there was a Christian school that they could become a part of. And so, and along the way they stumbled upon Jackson, uh, found Jackson Christian was here, already established uh, in a growing stage and something that they could jump in and be a part of and help grow. To see them graduate, um, they were able to hold their heads high. I sat there and cried the whole time. <laughs> I was very proud of my children, and I feel like this is the way God used me to have an impact, not only on my children, but now their children. It's my privilege to be able to encourage each one of you to think beyond your own influence, think beyond your own lifespan, to invest into families, to invest into students who will carry the message of Jesus Christ long after you are gone. Last year, I had a little boy come to my office and it was close to the end of the day and it, you're in a hurry. Everybody's trying to, to go home and you've got car duty and everything. And he walked in and, and I almost walked past him, but he came on in and he said, "Miss Bradford, my sister's going to have surgery. Could, could you pray for her? And, and I stood there and I thought, slow down and do what you're here for. For, do what you're supposed to do. And I said, come on in here, we can pray right now for your sister. And we sat down on the couch and we both prayed for his sister. That's why uh, this is a unique place. There was a young lady in my classroom one day, and, but something didn't go just exactly right. And she all of a sudden got very upset and just went storming out. And. Uh, I followed her out, I had to go after her, and the librarian had my, my other students, so she went back to my room. We kind of sat down and talked and uh, found out that uh, it was her grandfather that had uh, died just the, uh, the day before, so she was carrying that load with her. We spent most of the rest of the period just sitting in there and talking about her grandfather. It was probably a year or two later, my wife saw her out in the a community somewhere working and she asked her about me and she said he was my favorite teacher and I remember exactly when I became her favorite teacher. It's just it's a, a very very exciting time to me in Jackson Christian. I've got my girls are there and uh, they're they're excited about what the future holds and it's just, uh, it's fun to see, see it growing like it is. The biggest blessing for me is that uh, their legacy lives on in us children and in so many students that, that mom touched and that dad influenced uh, as a leader at Jackson Christian. And I look at this work that we do on this campus as an eternal ministry. I look at it from the perspective of we are investing in students who will be investing in their children and their grandchildren. Our oldest, Clayton, uh, plays football and baseball, and when we left the old school that he was at, it was real important that uh, he was involved in a program where he could grow physically, spiritually, emotionally. And so we looked at the big three over here, uh, and the Sunday before we made the decision, he said, Dad, let's go look at the baseball fields at all the schools. And, and we did, and uh, we ended up here at Jackson Christian. Um, and just so happened, uh, Chuck, uh, Coach Chuck Cooper happened to leave his sunglasses. So he and I and Clayton, uh, you know, they say accidentally met. I don't think it was at all. And we talked, and, and uh, he really took a liking to Clayton, and Clayton liked him. But the most profound thing that happened that day was as we were walking off, he said, Mr. Converse. And I remember looking at him and go, please call me Clark. I'm not Mr. Converse. 
Um, he said, I don't care where you go to school. This is a great school. But wherever you send your son, you and he need to pray about it. And we got in the car and Clayton said, this is where I want to go to school. Being the parent of a special needs child, um, the norm is not always easy to deal with and being able to get involved in an atmosphere that uh, incorporates uh, more or less that just accept him for how he is. His very first day I went into the classroom and I sat down with the kids in this little circle with all these little munchkins around me and they were just like shooting off questions just like does he like football can he color can he talk can he you know all of these typical questions that you get from all of these little kids and i just sat there and you have such peace and tranquility i'm like this is going to work out this is going to be good after that you know alan came back into the classroom and it was like they instantly knew each other there was no all right, here's the new kid, and he's sitting in the corner, and he has this disability, and you can see his physical characteristics, and you can see it, and you can hear his differences, but they didn't see that. It is our desire that we produce students from Jackson Christian that are fully equipped to engage the world that they find themselves in, that they're fully equipped academically athletically, socially, but most importantly that they're fully equipped spiritually to be able to be cognizant and conversant with their faith, to be able to have a perspective on why they are living the life that they live, why they choose the profession that they're choosing. Well, I think that anything that has value needs your support, whether it's financially or moral support. It's worth every penny. I've not spent one penny over there that I feel like uh, that I regret. And I would encourage anyone to go ahead and make the commitment and just call it an investment. And there's not a better investment that you can make. Uh, it's not inexpensive, uh, but most of the good things in life aren't. I would support Jackson and Christian even if we had to make a lot of other sacrifices that we haven't already made. The best investment you can make is not in your stock portfolio or the big house that you live in, but it's the best investment you can make is in other people. I would encourage anybody who's uh, been touched by the blessings of this institution, think, think and pray about it and look at how you can kind of pay forward the blessing that you've received in Christian education and provide for generations to come so that they can enjoy the same benefits that we do. Everybody's willing to do whatever they can. And if you're watching this video and you feel led to, to send your kids here or you've had kids here and you feel led to, to donate money to what we're trying to do, and, and I'll, I'll ask for money in a heartbeat because what, what, what the administrative here and the board has put together is it's gonna take something great and make it better. And you know, it's not, we're trying to raise money to put a Band-Aid on something. We're trying to raise money to give these kids who have phenomenal opportunities even more. Pray about what God wants you to do and then listen to Him. You know, those who step out on faith, if they're listening to God, it's the greatest thing ever. It's our desire that when they leave this school, that they have such clarity that they recognize that leading in this community, leading in this world, is so much about their ability to follow Jesus Christ. And we want to produce students who are passionate followers of our Lord and our Savior.